Destiny, can you see it? Yeah, I see the screen. I see the Becoming Your Own Health Advocate slide. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear now, me? Now, yes. There's an echo. There's a major yeah. echo. Can you hear me now? Yes. Is it yes. better? No. Oh my gosh, yes. that was oh the worst. Gosh. That was I think it has a slight echo um, on my end. Yes, that's correct. There's a major echo. I'm thinking she's... Is, is there still an echo? No. Okay, oh my gosh. There you are. Oh, you know why? Because you have, are in, you're open in two places, so um it was okay sorry it no, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna remove the old one okay sorry about that i it's was great now okay. perfect okay let's go let's move they're here everybody's in the room let us begin awesome welcome everyone to our health advocacy workshop today um i'm so excited you could all join us and get to know um, how to become your own healthcare advocate. So we're going to get a, go ahead and get started. Just a few reminders. Um, please stay muted unless you are speaking. Um, you may have your cameras off or on, completely optional and up to you. We are recording. Um, so just be mindful of that. You are able to put any questions or comments in the chat as we have already started to utilize, I see. Um, and keep, please keep your questions until the end when we will have lots of time for Q and A. Um, so we will run into introductions. So I will go ahead and go First, really quickly, um, so my name is Shelby Felter and I am the president of the Adaptive Society, our newly revised um, disability club on campus. And I am also the Senator for the College of Education. And I'm very happy that we were able to get this together today. Um, Destiny, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Thank you guys for stopping by. This is awesome. I am the Commissioner for Disability Affairs here at Cal State Long Beach, and I've been working with Shelby for a lot of different projects in disability advocacy and also part of the new club, Adaptive Society. So um, nice to meet you all. My name is Faye Mayo. I'm the Student Health Services Referral Nurse um, on campus. Uh, my office is over at the um, Student Health Services, and uh, what I do is I assist students in um, applying for Medi-Cal. Um, and I also um, refer them out to um, any um, outside specialists and providers um, locally in the area. Thank you, Faye. My name is Heidi Gerling and I'm a health educator here at Student Health Services at Cal State Long Beach. Um, I've worked on campus um, just almost shy of 20 years. And um, I work in the clinic in the Office of Wellness and Health Promotion. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with sharing some information about insurance, because the purpose of this workshop today is helping students understand health insurance, understanding how to become their own healthcare advocate. And part of that is understanding what insurance is. So I'm going to show a short video that's really helpful. So here we go. And this comes from the Kaiser Family Foundation. Millions of us now have health insurance under the Affordable Care Act, or what some people call Obamacare. But like many things in life, your health insurance can often be confusing and complicated. Whether you've been insured for years or you're new to the game, understanding your policy is important to your health and your wallet. First things first, 
you have to pay your premium every month or your insurance could get canceled. Kind of like your cable subscription. You can also think of it like a shared healthcare piggy bank. We all chip in each month, even if we're healthy, so the money is there when we need it. If you get insurance at work, your employer probably pays most of your premium and the rest comes out of your paycheck automatically. If you have Medicaid, you most likely don't have to pay any premium at all. The federal government and your state take care of that. If you're insured through a new health insurance marketplace, depending on your income, you may be eligible for a tax credit that pays a portion of your premium. Once you have that shiny new insurance card, you'll want to try really hard to keep it in your wallet. To better your odds at staying healthy, be sure to take advantage of the free preventive services that all new insurance plans provide. <coughs> but of course, stuff happens. And that's when insurance really comes in handy. Now, having insurance helps a lot, but it doesn't mean all your health care is going to be free. There are lots of details about your insurance plan that affect how much you pay when you get sick or injured. <laughs> if you have Medicaid, a lot of these services could very well be free. Otherwise, you'll likely have to pay something when you go to the doctor or fill a prescription. This is called a copay when it's a specific dollar amount, like $25 per visit, or coinsurance if it's a percentage of the bill. There's also the deductible. That's how much comes out of your own pocket before your insurance starts paying. Depending on your plan, you might have a deductible for all your care, or it might only apply to some types of care, like hospital stays and prescriptions. So read your plan material, because it could add up to thousands of dollars. <gasps> Another important part of your plan is the out-of-pocket maximum. This is the most you'll ever have to pay in any one year, at least for the benefits your plan covers. Your insurer will pay 100% of anything beyond the maximum for the rest of the year. It can be just as confusing dealing with prescriptions. Your plan has a list of drugs it will pay for called a formulary, but the prices vary. Check with your doctor or pharmacist because a generic drug might fix you up the same as a brand name drug, but the price difference could be huge. So those are the costs typically involved but remember that they'll be affected by your insurance plan's provider network. This is a list of doctors and hospitals that are connected to your plan. Insurance companies negotiate discounts with these providers. Stay in network and the discounts get passed to you. Go out of network and you could end up paying full price. And remember that out-of-pocket limit? It won't work if you go out of network. In some plans like HMOs or EPOs, your insurance would pay nothing if you go out of network. In other plans, like PPOs, your insurance will cover you no matter where you go, but you'll pay a lot more if you go out of network. Also, if you want to visit a specialist, like an orthopedist, some plans require a referral from your primary care doctor. Sound easy enough? Well, sometimes staying in network can be tricky. In a hospital, it's possible that your surgeon could be in network while your anesthesiologist is not. If this happens to you, don't be afraid to negotiate with your provider or file an appeal with your insurer. So as you can see, there's a lot to think about when you choose an insurance plan each year. Some plans may have low premiums, but fewer doctors or hospitals and high deductibles. There are trade-offs, and understanding and choosing among plans isn't always easy. Remember, if you have questions, call your health plan and ask or check with your hospital or doctor. If you still have questions, your state insurance department or consumer assistance program can help. With the Affordable Care Act, there's new support for consumers, so take advantage of it. Having health insurance protection is a good thing, especially when you know how it works. We hope you're now better prepared for the next time you have to pull that insurance card out of your wallet. Stay safe, America. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. I hope you felt uh, that was pretty um, useful information. I think it's one of my favorite short videos to explain the basics of health insurance. Um, and that came from the Kaiser Family Foundation. If you're ever looking for some great information or resources, um, you can always check out their website. And it's kff.org. 
So um, let's do just a review of health insurance terms. So what is a copay? So that copay is paid by the insured person. So you being the member, um, and then the remainder of the cost would be paid by the insurance company. So in those copays are every, it's a fixed amount that's outlined in your policy. And it's every time you go use, go to the doctor's office or um, the hospital. A deductible is the amount you have to pay out of pocket for uh, for those covered expenses before the insurance company will cover the remaining costs. So always check your plan to find out if you have a deductible. And the premium is the amount of money that you pay for your insurance plan. So this is really similar to car insurance, having premiums for car insurance and deductibles. You don't see that a copay with car insurance, but it's kind of similar. Okay, so I just want to review the different types of health insurance. I'm not going to go into the um, HMOs or PPOs. That's information that you can uh, check on later. Uh, so we won't go into those details today, but I just want to make sure that you understand that private insurance is either employer sponsored. So that means you enroll through your work or maybe for a lot of our students, it's through their parents work. And then there's the individual market. Uh, and this is when you purchase your plan on your own. So maybe you've graduated from college, but you are part of the gig economy and you are um, a consultant to um, a company. Maybe you're an artist or you're a full time musician and you need to buy your own insurance plan. Then we call that the individual market. Then there's public insurance, and this is also known as government sponsored insurance. And um, Medicaid is what each state has, and Medicaid is jointly funded by the federal government and by each state. So in California, we call it Medi-Cal. I believe in Georgia, it's called Healthy Peaches. So each state has their own type of Medicaid, and ours is Medi-Cal. And later, Faye is going to give you more information about Medi-Cal. But basically, Medicaid or Medi-Cal in California is for low-income persons. And then there's Medicare, and maybe many of you have heard of Medicare, and that's for people who are 65 years and over, or there are people who have terminal illnesses or ki kidney failure. All right, we'll go ahead now and pass this on to Destiny. Yeah, so it's really important just talking about the aspect of healthcare because it is really important. So. Why do you need health insurance? Um, just in general, healthcare is very expensive, especially if you're living with a chronic illness or even a terminal illness, because uh, all that stuff adds up at the end of the day and paying out of pocket is really hard for some people, especially for low income. Um, it's like a savings account. If you really think about it, it's kind of an investment for when something does happen because life is unpredictable. Kind of like when you buy insurance for your computer, if you could buy it, maybe you know something happens to your computer and unexpectedly you have that money to get uh, you know, either it fixed or you get a brand new computer. So just look at it like that. So a lot of the times preventative care could be free or even low cost. So um, you don't have to pay a pocket for those depending on what insurance you go for. And honestly, um, I, as someone that uses Medicare, um, I, it helps me a lot. So for one insulin pen, I, I get it covered because I have insurance. So not having to pay that extra expense is really good. And you know, just knowing that healthcare helps you in the future and even the present day, it's really good to, to keep it. And it, it, it prevents less stress in the future. So you and your family and those around you um, are less stressed when you have insurance. And I will pass it over to Faye for the next slide. So how do you get health insurance? Each state has their own website. Ours is Covered California, which is kind of like an online mall for health coverage. It's user-friendly, you just go to the website and complete a form which will determine what you would qualify based on your income. There are subsidized plans and options for private insurance as well. Many students will qualify for Medi-Cal, which is California's healthcare program that pays for a variety of medical services, both for adults and children who have limited income and resources. Medi-Cal is supported by state and federal taxes. Some key points for applying for Medi-Cal. You may apply for Medi-Cal at the age of 26. Now, this is the time usually when people are terminated from their parents' health plan because of their age. Um, but you can also apply for Medi-Cal as early as 18 if you are an independent, meaning you aren't claimed on your parent or guardian's taxes. 
If you're employed, your monthly income must be less than 1400 for you to qualify. Important documentation to have when applying for Medi-Cal include a photo ID, your two most recent paycheck stubs, um, and that's for income verification, along with your social security card. And you can apply for Medi-Cal um, year round. One thing to keep in mind is that the Medi-Cal process is not quick. It can take several weeks to months once the application is submitted uh, and one is deemed eligible. Once you are eligible, you will receive a packet in the mail to choose a provider or a primary care doctor. After a provider is chosen and information is submitted, you will receive a card in the mail, which includes your new, provi new provider's phone number and address. At that point, you may call and schedule an appointment to establish care. So I highly advise uh, students applying for Medi-Cal to speak with a Medi-Cal enrollment specialist at the Long Beach Department of Health and Human Services because they'll be able to go through the process um, and the questions step by step with applicants um, and answer any specific questions that you may have. So um, Shelby and I were gonna really talk about um, accessing healthcare. So just getting insurance coverage is really important and you kind of research more into it and the different aspects that are covered through your insurance. So sometimes some insurances could have dental coverage, medical coverage. It just really depends on how much um, you're putting into the insurance and what kind of insurance and what, if you're working with a you know, certain company, some companies have different kinds of insurances and I know one of the, the main, main things for this is just picking your primary care provider, but even when you have health insurance, sometimes it also limits and kind of like gives you different options of what health what healthcare provider you could pick. So really keep that in mind. Um, Shelby, do you have anything else to add for your experience in, in accessing healthcare on your end? Um, so just ensuring that you also, when you make your appointment, try to keep them because you don't know like when the next appointment is going to be available. So just make sure you understand that. And also knowing, um, be prepared with some questions, go into your appointment and really take control. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. So when we think of um, getting care, there's different kinds of care. So we know there's preventative care and there's emergency care. So just knowing the differences between that could really help you or maybe those around you and loved ones uh, when to actually go to the emergency care or the um, urgent care. Because there's two different kinds of places where you can go for extreme uh, life-threatening care. So difficulty breathing, bleeding that won't stop, change in mental status. Uh, I think suicidal feelings is also something that we could keep in mind because although it's not physically at times, you know, you don't see it, you know, mentally, sometimes, you know, those feelings are there and that could lead to, to harm. So we want to keep that in mind as well. And swallowing poison, just because that's also very common, especially, you know, when we think about common items that we, we don't see that there's a threat to it. So poison and severe abdominal pain. Mm -hmm and I'll pass it to Faith. So some of the things that you can go to SHS for the clinic on campus is for basic medical care, like cuts and sprains, uh, cold and flu symptoms, STI symptoms, uh, things like that, as well as preventative care, such as wellness, wellness and reproductive health. Um, there's also a nurse advice line um, that you can call, and that's available from five, uh, p.m. to 8 a.m. every day, and they're also available um, over the weekend. All right, so in terms of how, how to become your own healthcare advocate, first of all, make sure that you know your rights, um, especially as a disabled person. It can be very intimidating going into a doctor you may never have been before um, and expressing how you feel and what you for sure need. Um, this also goes into building your relationship. So you want to build a close relationship with your providers. Um, that way they'll fully understand who you are and they'll know better what you need. Um, also understanding your body, making sure that you're in tune of what's going on and 
like Destiny said, when it is an issue and when you should um, access help for different sort of things that you might come across. Um, and like I said earlier, make sure you ask questions. Keep everything in your mind. Um, I like to take notes during my um, appointments or I sometimes will bring somebody with me as well um, to help take notes because it can be very overwhelming just getting all the information all at once. Um, so it really helps to possibly record your visit if you can, um, or like I said, have somebody with you. Also utilizing apps. Um, social media and everything is very, very useful now. Um, there's lots of Facebook groups for different types of disorders and disabilities. Um, and there's lots of resources out there that are very helpful. Um, just make sure that you're not running into things that might be false um, or make you a little too scared. I, I think we've all been on the Google search when we think we have just a headache and immediately comes up as brain tumor. Um, so just being careful to have that uh, knowledge as well. So when we think about healthcare and just getting um, care from hospitals and, and our professionals in the industry, we have to also think about what kind of insurance is best fit for me because not one insurance is fit for everybody, um, depending on your health status and anything that you wanna keep in consideration, we have to be able to adapt our medical plan to that. So is the doctor's close to you? Is the hospital clinic uh, one hour away from you? Just keeping those things in mind is really important just to not only for your benefit, but, but for those around you, I always emphasize that because when you're getting care from hospitals, your family and your friends are also involved in a way because they wanna see you healthy, they wanna see you doing good. And when we look on Google, we could look at all the referrals for different clinicians, different doctors. So really just do your research and just seeing what's best for you and what person is best for you. I had a personal experience of doctors. I have had many doctors in a span of four years. Uh, I had a doctor for in one case, I, I didn't want to go to him for my diabetic needs because I'm a type one diabetic. So I have to be on constant uh, watch with, with my endocrinologist. So I rather have went to my endocrinologist and I was sharing my numbers, but my general doctor that has nothing to do with my diabetes was actually getting upset that I didn't go to him. So he actually blocked off my medicine at one time and I couldn't get any of my medications. So I actually went to my endocrinologist and because of that connection I made with her, she, she was really quick on it and she actually took off the block from there and had a conversation with him. I ended up changing doctors. So that's also another part of advocacy when, when to change doctors or when to keep them, you know? So it's just up to you and what, what works for you. And yeah, and the bottom it says you can get in their provider or a second opinion. And you have so many resources within the medical industry. So really just researching and being your own advocate is important. And I will switch this over to Shelby for the next slide. Yeah, so these are some um, campus resources that we have available to you in case you don't know. Um, we have BMAC, which is the Bob Murphy Access Center, which is for disabilities. Um, we have student health services, um, student health services, Beach Wellness, uh, Student Health Services, which are um, Faye and Heidi, our amazing helpers here today. Um, and Christina is dropping links to all of these resources as well into the chat. Um, and if you are a special population, we also have resources for our undocumented students, um, our veterans. And also I wanted to mention as well, just a shout out to basic needs because at the end of the day, the foundation of everything we do is also goes back to basic needs. So if you need help with food insecurity, um, home insecurity, anything like that, definitely reach out. Um, there are resources for you on campus. So yeah, we'll go to the next slide. Yeah, and these are just our advocacy resources. So for those that are interested in seeing where we got our sources from, these are very reliable sources and have so many different things that could help you become 
your own advocate and kind of help you decide what health insurance is best for you. I forgot, uh, let me pass it um, to Jeremy next for the next slide. All right, thank you so much, Destiny. So um, hello everyone, my name is Jeremy. I am the commissioner for wellness affairs. So I got to work with them closely as you know, health services can be very difficult. So we are here to support one of you. So I know many of you can have um, some questions. So um, I see there's poll questions. So they'll be launching a poll or in case if you have any questions, you can always drop them into the chat or as well as you can unmute yourself or as raise your hand. So right now we have um, your poll launched. So please complete the survey so that we can hear feedback from all of you. So yeah, the first one is, do you have health insurance? Which is really important because some people, you know, probably don't have health insurance. And the second one is, what is your primary source of health insurance? And there's a whole bunch of different ways to obtain health insurance. So um, in my end, I know I use Medi-Cal, the public government service program. And the third one is, how capable do you feel advocating for yourself in healthcare? So that one's an interesting question because I know sometimes I, I call my mom like, hey, you know, can you come with me to the doctor's office or, you know, can you help me overlook the, the documents? So sometimes we do need assistance or sometimes we're just, you know, we know it all. But then again, we don't know it all, if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, ask away. So is, is now the open question time? Yes, let's go ahead and go into Q&A. OK. Um, I just want to make sure you see how I need. I want to see myself on camera. Do I look OK? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't see myself. OK, first of all, thank you, Heidi. Good to see you. I haven't it's seen you in a while. while. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, and thank you. And Faye, thank you so much for being you. I, we have spoken on the phone. My name is Brenda Freshman. I'm um, faculty in the healthcare administration department for those who don't know me. <laughs> and um, I'm also the internship coordinator. But I, I tuned in here. So if you don't mind, and you know, I'll try not to take up too much of your time. But I just, you know, as an instructor, I just had some comments from my students, three of my students are here, I made this an extra credit opportunity. So for any of the students out there, I just want you to take note, I thought this was a very well done presentation. So bravo to you, and I invite students to react. Um, I think it was well done, and I teach presentations. So here's what I think students should note from just your presentation skills. I thought you did well with the PowerPoints. You didn't have any too much text, and there was just the right amount of color. I think it creates a lot of interest to have multiple speakers. So I thought that was really great. And then. Thirdly, I thought you were bringing some really important information. So this is where some of my questions lead to. Um, so those are the three things that everyone can learn about how great your presentation was. The PowerPoints were good. The, the format was good. I think it was just the right amount of information and very good information that I think students need. I'm, I'm also surprised to see that there's only 17 participants. So um, I know that I reacted to this and got it to my students. I'm, I'm just very curious how you promoted this because I would be thinking that a lot more students would find this useful. So we promoted on, and that's a great question, thank you. Um, we promoted on Beach Sync, we promoted on Instagram, Facebook, and um, I sent out marketing to probably about 30 faculty members that I'm familiar with, that I have contacts with, and some staff members as well and uh, some students but mostly staff and uh, faculty and uh yeah and instagram so yeah i just think more people should see this <laughs> now i'm going to ask my students to let me know in their reports how useful it was for them they could speak up now or privately but i noticed as i said 17 people here there's several of them are the speakers i'm here and three of them are my students so Heidi, you definitely did right in reaching out to me. I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. Um, okay. I'm, what we will do is we are, this is recorded and we will be posting this to our YouTube channel 
as well. And we will share that uh, the video and uh, make sure that there are others that will be able to access this. Okay, so um, great, because I will continue to make it an extra credit opportunity if they watch the videos. So I'll make sure I get the link. Okay, so now I have another question. I'm, I'm going to stop and see if anyone else has questions, because I have another question, but it's a little bit longer, and it relates to behavioral health. So I'm going to stop and see if anyone else has questions, and you can come back to me. I'm going through the chat, and I'm not seeing any questions I and see I, America has her hand up. Oh, go ahead, America. You want to unmute yourself, America? Hi, I really enjoyed this presentation and it's actually something that I've been looking into is like um, health insurance. And I had a question about, since I'm on my parents' health insurance plan, but due to just, you know, language barriers and all that, it's always hard to actually obtain the information of what's available to me through my health insurance. So is there anywhere that I could look into to find that information depending on the health insurance plan that my parents have? Well, I can take that question. Uh, usually, if you have questions about your health coverage, it's best to just, um, if you have access to your parents' um, insurance card, you can always call customer service. You can't go wrong with that. They'll be able to kind of break it down as far as what benefits you have um, and how much your insurance covers. So that would be the first place. And usually it's 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 located on the back of your card, um, the customer service or member service um, number. Does that answer your question or? Yes, it did, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else have questions? Yes, I do have one question. Um, thank you so much for the presentation. I find it very helpful. And for me, let's say, what would be the transition like? Because I'm on my parents' um, insurance plan. Let's say if I get a job um, right after graduating, what would be the transition of the insurance plan would look like for a college student? So I'll take that one as well. So usually for that, um, type of situation, it really depends on if your parents still claim you on their taxes. So if they claim you on their taxes um, and your insurance coverage is through them, and if, and if I guess it, I guess the question is, um, um, is if you have Medi-Cal or a private insurance, do you know what type of coverage you have? Mm -hmm. um, it's like uh, private insurance. Okay. So um, yeah, I think the, I think the cutoff um, age is 26, but each um, specific um, insurance plan um, have their own, they have their own um, um, policies and, uh, and um, you know, cutoff dates. So another an, uh, a cutoff time or, or age. So you might want to just another, that's another thing that you might want to, might want to ask your parents um, about, because it's really, since they're the ones that are the primary, um, they're the primary insured. So you'll have to check with them to see um, how that's how that would how that would go um, if you are continuing to be covered under them. Got it. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. And I see a question in the chat. Jeremy, do you want to go ahead and take that? Yes. So Don asks for students who may have Medi-Cal in another country, what would you suggest for where they can get support if they need to transfer? Okay, so for Medi-Cal in another county, I've had a lot of students that have actually been in this type of um, situation before. So it's gonna be kind of sticky because if you are, um, if you are under your parents' plan through Medi-Cal because Medi-Cal is, um, county specific. Um, and so they are going to either your, your parent will have to contact your uh, caseworker wherever your Medi-Cal was initiated. And they'll have to speak with the caseworker to see if they're able to have you transfer to another, uh, to another county. But that um, is, um, is a, it's, it's not an easy uh, transfer if that's even possible. Um, it's easier as if, if you are um, 
if you are, you know, an independent um, and you're not under your parents' plan, um, if they are, if there's a way that they're able to not um, have you be, um, it, um, have you be under their plan or they, so that, you know, if you're not, if there's a way that you don't have to be um, on, the, um, what do you call this? Sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. Um, if there's if there's a way for them not to claim you on their taxes, then that would be better for you because it'll be easier for the transition. But even then, the transition uh, or transfer from one county to another takes takes um you know several weeks to months sometimes. So just that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I definitely understand that. I just went through that actually moving down to Long Beach. So um, definitely be patient, um, but also make be that squeaky wheel, be your advocate for yourself because these people have a lot going on on their plates. And so it's up to you to really, really keep on it and make sure that they're doing what you need them to do. Great questions. Um, okay, so I don't see any other questions in the chat. So, um, uh, Dr. Freshman, you had said you had a question you wanted to ask. Yeah, I actually have um, a quick kind of student perspective one, and then kind of a strange faculty perspective one. So the student one, um, just uh, you might have covered it, but if I was a student and I walked into the student health center to uh, you know take a veil of some of those services. Um, maybe I wanted a wellness check or, you know, maybe I needed a band aid. <laughs> um, what kind of insurance or do, do I need any insurance or is that just covered in my student health fee? I just wanted to make sure that was clear. A great question. Um, it is part of the student health fee. So every semester a student is enrolled here at Cal State Long Beach, they pay a $75 health fee that comes out of their tuition. And that enables them to use our clinic as many times as they need to during the semester. We are also open during winter break, spring break, uh, fall break, summer break, and students are um, allowed to use us during those times as well. Um, there is no copay to use our clinic ever, unless you're an international student. So international students are enrolled differently. Um, and sometimes that requires that they use, I think it's through the extension program on campus, and then they would have to pay a uh, copay. But domestic students do not have uh, any copays. We do not bill health insurance. None of the CSU campuses engage in insurance billing um, because of that uh, prospect is extremely expensive to create a um, billing offices for all of the CSUs. So we've um, managed to avoid that at this point. Um, although you'll see the UC campuses have gone that route, but they also have often have hospitals attached to their campuses. So since we don't have that in the CSUs, we don't deal with health insurance. So there's no charge to come use us. Um, the only thing you ever pay for are pharmaceuticals, lab tests that can't be done in our own clinic because we do have our own excuse me in our we have our own laboratory in-house um if it, we can't do a specific test it would go to an off-site laboratory and there would be a low cost charge for example let's say you wanted to get your blood sugar and your cholesterol checked it would be less than 20 dollars to have those blood tests analyzed for um, blood glucose and cholesterol but there's many tests that we can do in-house as well, like urinalysis, um, pregnancy testing, strep throat cultures. And that, those are just a few examples. Um, so that's in the pharmaceuticals. We have our own pharmacy and we sell over-the-counter products at very low costs. For example, you can get a bottle of 100 Tylenol for $1.50. We sell Claritin for $4.00. Um, we have uh, morning after pills, so Plan B for six dollars, uh, condoms twelve for two dollars. So we have a lot of different products. Uh, we have vitamins, sunscreen, and it's very low cost. We also sell prescription drugs as well. So an average cost of antibiotics. So let's say you have you have a seven day course of treatment for antibiotics. It's about four dollars. So very low cost, and um, we do have a program for birth control, and um, that's called Family Pact. And Family Pact would provide free birth control, um, free STI testing, treatment um, for students who qualify. 
and we can get more information to students who are interested in that. Um, and we can put that in the chat as well for Family Pact. But we do enrollment here and we can use Family Pact to pay for reproductive health. So great question. Um, definitely check out our website. There's a lot of wonderful information about um, the health center and how to use us. We recommend always making a phone call first. So is that the best way to schedule? You know, what's the best way to schedule an appointment? Call us. Okay, and call. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put that information in the uh, right here. You'll see our website here. So um, this is a little of information about the health center. So we're located on the corner of Beach Drive and Merriam Way. And we're right across from the nursing building and housing. And there's a parking lot right behind us and that's parking lot G3. So we're really conveniently located and we do in-person and telehealth visits. We recommend that you call first, 562-985-4771 um, is the phone number. And uh, like uh, earlier Faye had mentioned that we're only open Monday through Friday, eight to five. And um, so after hours, there is a nurse advice line and they will triage you and give you um, information about what they recommend if you need to go to urgent care or an emergency room or if it's something that self-treatment uh, can help you with for that evening until the next day, and then you can get an appointment with us. You're always welcome to email us at wellness at csulb.edu for more information. I answer that email address uh, five days a week, sometimes more, um, but I answer that email. Um, so you can always ask questions and I will help you navigate. We are on social media and actually we're very active on social media. So maybe you have questions about COVID testing, COVID vaccines, um, or just want to know what, what the health center is up to. You can follow us on Instagram at CSULBSHS. Great. So I imagine, um, and I've dealt with this with the center, that things sometimes change depending on the 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 health conditions in the community say, um, of what you're of it, what you're able to offer and stuff. So with those updates, would the service updates be on the website? Yes. Like when if, if the pandemic flares up again and you have to open or close or do stop yes. because you're doing something like vaccines. Or mm -hmm. Yes, we would always uh, post that on our website. And then that's why we always recommend calling first to schedule your appointments and not just showing up uh, because then you're certain to get the information you need before you spend your time walking over here. Okay, that was excellent for the students. Now I have kind of a, a question that's gonna go into a little bit of tangent, but it's gonna come back to you guys and what you just did here today. And Heidi, if you have any ideas for me about this, um, we can talk differently, but it might be interesting still to have here. So I'm on what's called the Mental Health Advisory Board for CHHS, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, our charge, it, well, basically, there's a representative from each faculty member. I mean, each department has a faculty member. And, you know, we, what we're supposed to do, and we've been working on it for a while, is to encourage faculty to take the, um, the first aid training, the mental health first aid training, which I'm assuming you're somewhat familiar with. Okay. Yes. So here's the link. So that was the tangent. Now I'm going to bring it on back to your presentation. <laughs> So I'm thinking if we think this through, because, you know, why are we encouraging faculty to take the mental health um, first aid training so, you know, we can be kind of first responders and then, then connect people with resources on campus, right? So assume that all works and we connect people who need to be, they connect with you or they connect with CAPS, but if they don't have insurance or they haven't like had this information in advance, it's going to be a lot harder for them to connect to the resource at the other end of that. This is what I was thinking from my role in this committee, mm -hmm. which is why I'm thinking it's really important that students see this like when they're a freshman, um, you know, because to me, I see this also from an HR perspective. If I see um, the students as kind of our employees, right, but they're not there, but they're people, they're, they're our human resources. And this presentation that you did here today was encouraging them to connect with the insurance and the, the healthcare. So ultimately they can connect with the healthcare they need, which is a huge challenge. I mean, it's very challenging to deal with healthcare. So look, I have a PhD and I cannot, 
it's taken me months. I have yet to get a mammogram appointment. Now I'm out here in rural health country, so it's totally different, but I can't believe how hard it is. So as a student, you know, I just think this is really valuable. So I stopped there, Heidi, because I think, you know, I guess my thought is for like, you know, is there a way we can get this information more out? Can maybe the faculty help? I, and maybe, maybe sending this to the deans or the department chairs to encourage students to watch it like I did today. I don't know if my three students are still here, but <laughs> anyway, I'll stop there. But if you have any ideas, because you see what I'm saying, it's like, it's going to be shame. Like we get all this training, we connect the student to CAPS or whatever. And if there isn't a there there, it's gonna be a lot harder. So mm -hmm. maybe we can brainstorm in a, in a different environment as part of my role in MHAB. I invite you or any colleague, help us get the, the students more connected. Okay, I end there. No, I appreciate that Dr. Freshman. And, um, and I'm so grateful that we have Faye here on staff because um, there were day, there was many years prior to phase coming into our clinic where we didn't have somebody that could assist students in that way. And the other um, way of connecting our students to off campus care is our social workers. So that's another uh, arena that Cal State Long Beach has really promoted in hiring social workers throughout campus. So the Dean of Students currently has three social workers. We have a social worker at CAPS and we have a social worker in Student Health Services. So currently I believe we have six Oh, and then, of course, there's one more through the CARES program, and that's Jolene, um, who is on the call today. So um, Jolene came into this session, I'm, which I'm so appreciative of her uh, attention to helping us with this, our, um, our programming. But yeah, this is a, an area that I think most campuses struggle with, is how do we connect uh, our students in universities to off-campus care, and particularly for those who don't have health insurance or who are undocumented students and may have very limited ability to receive health care in a preventative way. Um, so these are areas that um, that our campus is working that we are working on and that we have, I think, made really major leaps forward. And I look at Cal State Long Beach as a uh flagship university and we are leading the charge for the other csu campuses in hiring so many social workers to help our students connect to care um i believe jolene's still on this call and i know i'm not supposing maybe she might want to add something to that sure hi heidi hi everyone hi, thank you jolene <laughs> sorry to put you on the spot <laughs> no worries um, it's nice to meet you all and thanks for the quick minute. I'm happy. So there's 11 social workers or marriage and family therapists, but um, 11 case managers across campus who are here to help students get connected with whatever care you may need both on and off campus. And we're happy to work with you. We're located throughout a variety of different programs and there's a variety of different ways you can contact us. What I'm thinking may be useful is I'll put our link in the chat for anyone that's interested and you're welcome to either keep that or share it with friends or post it, whatever may be most useful, but please know that we're here to help you in whatever way we can. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Jolene. I really appreciate that. And Destiny has her hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah, so there's actually two questions in the chat just before we end it really quick. Is there a process or paperwork before we have to do before using before arriving to student health services? Mm, great question. Yes. So um, when just like going to any new doctor, you have a health history form that you need to complete. When you make your appointment, you immediately have access to your patient portal and you can access your patient portal through your single sign on or my apps. Uh, which I believe is now the new name for it is my apps and you'll see um, in that uh, on that page, you will see that there's a student health services and you click that tile and then that will take you into your patient portal and you can complete your health history form there. And you can also complete your HIPAA form all online so before you even get here for your appointment to save time. Let's say you didn't have a chance to finish those forms ahead of time. That's not a problem. We'll give you an iPad or you can do it on your phone when you arrive. 
Great question. What's the next one? And the next one is how, how would you recommend getting connected with a mental health provider using your health insurance? Faye, do you want to answer that one? <laughs> so, um, so normally we have, um, you know, if a student has any con concerns or questions about uh, mental health providers in the area, um, I can assist, or we also have David assist. So depending on, um, depending on what the need is, we would be happy to um, assist them in connecting with a uh, provider through their insurance. Awesome. And one more final question just popped up in the chat. How much is the sunscreen through the Cal State Long Beach Pharmacy? Happy face. <laughs> Good question. I am not sure. Um, I haven't checked in a couple of years, um, but the last time, if I remember, I think it was about five dollars. So pretty low cost. But you can always call uh, the clinic and get transferred to the pharmacy and you'll, they'll give you the number. You can also go to our website and you can check there. Um, they might have the, I believe that the last, they did over pandemic start posting their prices on the website. I have a question that I just thought about. Um, for our students who have um, children, um, or who may be utilizing our child development center, um, would they be able to utilize, would their children be able to utilize our student health services as well? Or is it just for the student? Just for the students, just for enrolled students only. But a gotcha. great question. Um, that's, and unfortunately, no, we, we can only see our students because they pay our salaries in our clinic. And right. they also, and, and also that student health fee also pays for some counselors over at the at the counseling center and two that are housed in uh, the dorms. So we're helping fund that as well. Gotcha. Um, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. So I currently have Medi-Cal um, and I heard you guys say that um, the that not the deadline, but like the final age to apply is 26. So does that mean that I can only have Medi-Cal until I'm 26 years old or is that service all like ongoing? So usually for Medi-Cal, I wanna say that um, by the time you're 26, you if you have Medi-Cal through your parents, is that what it is or? No, I have Medi-Cal like by oh. myself. Oh no, so if you, if you have Medi-Cal on your own and you're independent, that's old, that only applies to those who are um, um, still uh, under their parents' um, Medi-Cal plan. Um, or sometimes if you're talking about private insurance too, like if, if you know, care stops um, under your parents' plan at 26. But if you're 26 and you are, uh, independent and you applied for Medi-Cal on your own that's that it doesn't apply oh, you're never going you're never great. you're not going to lose it unless your income level changes right, right of course mm -hmm. oh, okay I was starting to get worried for a second <laughs> sorry for the confusion <laughs> no you're, you're good thank you for the clarification all right so if there's any more questions questions, let's go ahead and put those in the chat or just um, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask that. Okay, well, um, it seems like we've, uh, we have exhausted all the questions everybody has, please feel free to email us if you have any other questions, and we will help uh, navigate um, you to the answers and make sure that you get the resources that you need. And I so appreciate everyone coming on to our um, coming to this presentation today, and um, we will do a we have recorded this and we will make sure that it is um, shared on our YouTube channel for student health services. Thank you so much for attending. And if there's anything else we can be of service, please let us know. That was awesome.